Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're talking about TIG welding the root pass in a 6G, 6 inch pipe test today, uh, Schedule 80, and we are going to use a 1 8 root and a 1 8 rod typically. There are other methods of doing it, like this keyhole method using a, about a 1 8 uh, to a slightly bigger than 1 8 gap and a 3 32nd rod. I like this method a lot for certain things, but today we're talking about lay wire which is another technique which uses a, an eighth inch or a tight one eighth inch gap and a one eighth rod and just bear down on the tip of the rod like that and scoot it forward and back and we're going to be doing that a lot today we're going to put the whole root pass in this in this joint but we're going to start at the beginning and it all starts with prep you need to have a, a good accurate bevel and typically the, uh, the the codes call for a 37 and a half degree bevel give or take two and a half degrees different codes call for a different angle on the bevel but that is uh, that's very standard so this is about a 35 degree bevel hardly any land like if there is a land on it and the land is the would be the flat spot ground on the sharp point of the bevel bevel if there is any land on this uh, mine it's only about a 30 second or so so you can gap it using a piece of plate an eighth inch piece of uh, bar stock but what's more common is just bend to one eighth rod like that and use that. Now you do have to take it out of there after the first tack or you'll really struggle getting it out of there because those tacks will really shrink down on it make it very difficult to get out but for getting that first tack on there that's fine. You want to pay a lot of attention to the fit up, the high low also called mismatch. You can just run your fingers and the combination of fingers and eyeballs you can get it within a 30 second easily and you want to definitely get it as close as possible. You don't want to have mismatch in there that just makes it harder. And any mismatch can really mess you up on a bend test too when you're having to blend it off and you've got uneven sides. So putting that first tack in there, I'm doing this at roughly 120 amps. I get it joined by, you know, kind of just putting the rod in there and pushing it in there and getting the, getting the metal to join to both sides and then just scoot back and forth. And all your tack welds is a good, is a good time to kind of uh, verify that you got your heat right. So, you know, set it weld and kind of gauge whether or not it's hot enough, too hot, whatever. And so I wound up, like I said, wound up with about 120 amps here for this application. And I'm going ahead and pulling that rod out of there and then I'm going to put another tack 180 degrees the other side of that tack as soon as I kind of bang it and tap it around and get it, get the uh, get the gap back to an eighth of an inch where it needs to be. After I get four tacks on it, each one 90 degrees apart, it will be ready to weld, or at least not ready to weld, but ready to prep the tacks for welding. If you're taking this test, you need to ask ahead of time details like how long do I make my tacks? What's too long? What's too short? Some inspectors are very picky on how long you make your tacks. Now what I'm doing here is I'm feathering the edge of the tacks. This is the top tack. It's going to be put at 12 o'clock. That's the only tack that I'm going to feather both sides of. That is just how I do it. Lots of people feather both sides of all tacks. I'll explain in just a minute uh, my, my, my thinking here. The top tack I'm welding to. 12 o'clock tack, I'm going to weld to it and I'm going to tie into it from both sides. But all the rest of the tack, all the rest of the tacks, there's one side that I'll be welding to but another side that I'll be lighting up on. And the ones that I light up on, I don't want them feathered personally because of the technique I use. It just helps me not to suck back especially down there at six o'clock I don't feather it at all because I don't want to I don't want to have thin metal and risk on uh, on having suck back so I just feather one side of all the rest and then the bottom the bottom tack at six o'clock I don't feather at all so that's going to be the bottom tack and I'm not going to touch it with a grinder even though I broke the rod off right there I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it and I'll show you in just a minute the way I get around that so I've got a good 1 8 gap here all the way around pretty even just exactly an eighth where I really can't that that 1 8 rod won't fall through and that pretty much wants to happen because when you when you make these tacks it shrinks a little bit so you're going to have a if you use a 1 8 spacer you're going to have a tight 1 8 gap. Now you got to figure out some way of for practice here if you're practicing this joint you got to figure out some way of adjusting and holding the uh, pipe and I've just made a little homemade thing out of just crap that was laying around the shop, odds and ends, odd bolts and nuts and pieces of round stock and, and whatnot and it just made something that I can adjust the height on very easily 
and uh, put the pipe in there at a 45, lock it down, and, and uh, get it the right height and the right position to, to, to reach it. And that's very important because you, a lot of test shops, once you, once you tell them it's in place, you can't raise it, you can't lower it, you can't roll it, you might not even be able to take it out to, to grind or file on it. It's pretty much locked in place. They want to verify that you haven't moved that pipe at all. So what you want to do is you want to set it at the right height that you can see the top where it's not too high that you're in a bind at the top and that you can also see the bottom. Make up your mind whether you're going to weld the bottom half uh, on one knee and then stand up and weld the top. And you, this, These are things to work out beforehand before you go take a test. This particular joint I decided just I was going to weld the quarter of it, the bottom quarters uh, on a knee and uh, just because all I needed to weld was a quarter at a time once I tie into that tack time for a rest anyway and and uh, so I'm kind of experimenting to see if I could do it by bending over at the waist but that kind of uh, it's kind of tough especially if you got any back trouble you know bending over at the waist and, and uh, it's a slow go sometimes it'll take you a few minutes a couple of minutes to get it seems like longer than that actually to get from that bottom tack up to nine o'clock or three o'clock so I decided to do it on one knee and I'm taking lots of dry runs and this root pass, because I'm not walking the cup, I'm only doing forward and back motion. I'm just propping with a TIG finger. Now see, I lit up, I fused that rod, back up about an eighth, pause about a second, and then just go on. And that's how I'm going to do the, the, all those tacks that I didn't feather. I'm going to go ahead and light up, uh, get some rod in there, get it all tied in, back up about an eighth, wait about a second or two, and then go on. If you wait too long, that's when you get sucked back. But you see the technique here. It's forward and back, no side to side. And the TIG finger lets me just kind of scoot along and keeps my fingers nice and comfy. Otherwise, I've got to grab the torch back, prop somewhere else, because that, that pipe gets pretty hot. Bottom tack here not feathered just getting all all set up you know if you get ready to weld and you're not comfortable and you flip your helmet down and something doesn't seem right it's time to just kind of stop pause adjust readjust your hands your arms your wherever you're propping something you got you need to feel kind of at ease and comfortable before you light up because it's it's uh, it's important and it's a long way from tack to tack when that helmet's down if you're uncomfortable. So here I, I could feel the heat a little bit on that one so I just got another another little prop so I could so I could have a place to prop my hand without it without my hand starting to get smoking hot before I got there. So here's that technique again. Get that rod melted in there, back up about an eighth and then just carry on. Forward and back. Now you might see here a little bit of zigzag side to side motion not necessarily intentional, but the idea is don't wiggle that, that electrode back and forth. That'll make it a really flat root that sometimes actually suck back. But if you keep it in a straight line, you, that arc force will push that rod, push the, uh, the molten metal up through there, and then you back up and it, it lets it kind of melt in a little bit and flatten out on, on the, the outside where it'll be no trouble melting on the second pass. But here it is again, forward and back. And I, you see, I'm, it's a tight arc. You can almost see it push that metal up in there when it goes forward. And then I just back up. And it just gives me a way of uh, metering my travel speed. It works. That's the biggest thing. It, it, it works. Let's take a look at uh, what we've done so far. It's pushing through pretty, pretty well there. You can kind of see uh, it's fairly uniform. No areas to really be concerned about. There's a tie-in where I tie it into the tack. Not, it's not sucked back. It's blended in. Not perfect, that's for sure, but it is, uh, it's, it's blended in. It's fused in. No problem. There's the bottom, and there's the bottom tack. You can see where I came off that bottom tack right there. All right, now it's time to do the hard side or the left-handed side. And I'm going to take the top first just because I want to get used to welding with my left hand before I tackle that bottom part. So I'll take a few dry runs again and uh, go ahead and weld that top quarter. Just because I'm left-handed, nothing changes. 
I mean, I'm, I'm not left-handed. I swapped over to my left hand. Some people don't feel comfortable welding with their left hand at all, in which case you're going to have to figure out how to contort and a different way to hold the torch and weld both sides with your right hand. That's, that's usually not a big deal. I mean, people don't expect everybody to be able to use their left hand. Uh, if you can do it, it, it definitely works better on a 6G because one side is really uh, a lot harder to get to if you're, if you're not able to swap hands. All right, well, that's it for the top quarter, and then it's time to get on one knee and kind of position, light up on that bottom tack. And you can no notice the torch movement. It is about one per second. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, a little bit faster than one per second each time I move ahead and, and move back. That's, there's a lot of leeway there. You can do it a little quicker, forward and back quicker, um, but this seems to work about right. That's obviously a little bit quicker than one, one per second. Probably two per second, actually, if you, if you really count. But it, you see, push forward, it really pushes the rod up in there. Backing up just lets it melt in a little bit. And we are just about done with this root pass. I'm actually using a Dynasty 200DX here, about 120 amps. And I'm on one knee, run the foot pedal with the other knee. Most times you would probably be taking this test with a, a dry rig scratch start. Well, you won't have to worry about a foot pedal, but you do need to worry about something to uh, cushion your knee with so you won't get fatigued and in pain before you're done. There's the bottom. See where I, I uh, tied in coming off that bottom tack without either one being feathered? And you can see that the, even the bottom pushes through a little bit. So I've got a little reinforcement on the bottom. It's not a flat root like would, would happen if I weaved uh, wiggled that torch too much side to side. I'll give you a little peek of what it looks like all the way around. Again, not, not perfect, but pretty uniform. So stay tuned for part two, where we'll do a little cup walking on the hot pass, which is called the hot pass, but actually is no hotter than the root pass. And we'll talk about that in part two. All right, I saved this for the end, but now it's time for a little commercial plug for the 2012 four disc set of all the YouTube videos I did in 2012. It's also got a fifth bonus DVD, which is a TIG welding basic jump starter set to get you started off on the right foot TIG welding. You see right there I'm welding a chromoly cluster joint. It's laid out in a menu like this with thumbnails. Here I'm showing a little technique on uh, aluminum using a tight arc and then pulling the uh, torch back while I'm using filler rod. It is full of tips like this on TIG walking the cup with TIG on an open butt root pass like this. Um, also, I did a 6G 2-inch Schedule 80 root hot pass and stick fill-up uh, demonstration to help people who are about to go take a 6G test like the one I did. A, this, this, this video was about a 6-inch. Well, this one's about a 2-inch. Here's a little TIG welding technique using a different welding machine on some 4140 alloy. And also there's mixed in there stuff like uh, plasma cutting on sheet metal as well as plasma beveling, some thicker stuff. And there's also some tips on setting wire feed speed on MIG, simple MIG welding machines. What's too little wire feed speed? What's too much wire feed speed? Along with some just good basic sound MIG welding techniques for general fabrication and, and welding parts. Also a little bit of MIG welding aluminum with a spool gun, which is something unusual to find. And the cover pass on that 2 inch was done with the 7018 332nd rod. And so there's videos included in that DVD about that. Also, it's just some simple basic stick welding with 6013 and other rods using an AC buzz box. There's just a lot of stuff on this four disc set, and along with the five, the fifth uh, bonus disc. It's over seven hours worth of content. It's a year's worth of work, and you can learn more about it at welding-tv.com with the buy stuff button or weldingtipsandtricks.com by clicking on the store button. Well, thanks for hanging with me through this commercial, and as always, thanks for watching, and visit weldingtipsandtricks.com and welding-tv.com.